Well, with me to discuss all this is Philip Rubens. Philip is a partner at City Law Firm, of uh, law firm aptly named Finers Stevens Innocent. Philip, uh, this shows that the FSA isn't scared now of making some difficult decisions, well, I, I think, suppose. Well, I think it has demonstrated certainly a change in culture, uh, and it's a, it, it's a diffi it was a difficult case, and they've proven to be successful. So I think that uh, really hats off to the FSA. Well, I mean, even if you look at this case, I mean, let's walk through it. I mean, there were seven, I believe there were seven uh, counts here that he was actually cleared of, Malcolm Calvert. Yeah. Uh, you know, what does that tell us about the whole way that investigations into this, into insider dealing are actually investigated? Well, I'm not sure whether that's quite the right way to look at it. I, th I think that all these issues go to a jury. Uh, they heard the evidence, I think, over three weeks, uh, all individual counts, and they found him not guilty on seven counts and I think guilty on five counts. So it shows you perhaps how difficult it has been to take a case to a jury and that's why the FSA has been reluctant in the past to take cases to the ju to juries but in this case it did and it was shown to be successful um, he's not the big he's one of the biggest fish to be caught up till now but we haven't got a really big fish have we we haven't I think that is fair to say I think most of the other people who've been caught so far have been non-professional uh, individuals not non non-market people uh, they haven't so far caught somebody, but I suppose the message is out there. We're looking for somebody, uh, and ultimately we're going to get a big fish. Even, even with this one, though, you, you look at it and you think to yourself, well, it's pretty hard to try and get a conviction. Well, it, it was hard to try and get a conviction, and perhaps if this case had, had happened a number of years ago, they wouldn't have even tried, but there has been a change in policy. They are going down the criminal route and this case proves that they can be successful as well. Yeah, why is it so hard to prove guilt in insider trading cases? Because uh, there's very little direct evidence. You're relying upon inference, uh, what may have happened. You're not going to get people to stand up uh, in court, generally speaking, and say, this is what happened. And therefore, to bring these cases to a jury, where there is the burden of proof uh, beyond all reasonable doubt is very difficult from time to time and therefore the FSA has been reluctant to go down this route. Uh, Philip, have, has the FSA, the Financial Services Authority, actually got the right tools at the moment to curb market abuse? Well, it, it certainly is gaining more tools. Uh, you'll see uh, a number of things that are happening, uh, one of which is uh, the fines for market abuse are going to be trebled uh, and that is going to obviously hopefully be a deterrent. Uh, you're also going to see on the criminal front uh, immunity for pro from prosecution to witnesses and that may well ha also have a major effect on the number of criminal cases. Uh, but there hadn't been, I think, a trial of this kind since 2001 until 2008. Uh, something's changed at the FSA. Is it their head of enforcement, Margaret Cole, coming in? I, I certainly think that she's shaken, uh, she's shaken things up there. Um, and I think that Hector Sands as well and the whole FSA stance has changed and saying, if we have sufficient evidence, we will go after you and we will be seeking criminal sanctions which can include imprisonment. Philip Rubens, thank you very much indeed for joining us. That's uh, Philip Rubens. He's from Finers Stevens Innocent.